Next speaker is uh, Humphrey Kia, uh, who will present uh, um, toward an application profile for enhancing uh, agri-nutrition knowledge discovery in Kenya. And he works at, uh, uh, I think it's a technical university of Kenya. Um, yeah, Humphrey, please go ahead. Together with my two colleagues, uh, Jen Wambugu and uh, George Obani, we are going to present to you um, our best practice presentation entitled uh, Toward an Application Profile for Enhancing Nutrition Knowledge Discovery in Kenya. So uh, we'll introduce uh, my colleagues and then they will uh, proceed. First, uh, Jen will talk about the Kenya National Agri-Nutrition Conference. And then George will uh, talk about communication for Agri-Nutrition Conference. And I will finish off with the uh, metadata management. So I invite my colleague, uh, Jen, to pick up from there. Thank you. My name is Jen. Thank you. My name is Jen. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, agri-nutrition, Kenya National Agri-Nutrition Conference. And uh, as you uh, as, uh, depicted in the presentation, it's an inaugural, the first agri-nutrition conference was conceptualized and planned by the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries in 2017. And the agri-nutrition uh, Currently, is the blooding from home economy. That is where we start from production, crop production to utilization at household level. And that is where home economic work was. Uh, the, this agri-nutrition conference was uh, supported both financially and technically by the respective ministry, that is the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Social Protection, and other related organizations were represented in the, from both uh, financial and technical. Why have we, do we have a green nutrition conference? One, we have the global goal, that is uh, sustainable development goal two, of ending hunger and achieving food and nutrition security. Then we have, in terms of the law, we have Kenya constitution 1020, the light to food, and the, the, for the fission of Kenya, Kenya Fission 2030, there is the issue of investing in agriculture for food and nutrition uh, security. And that, uh, that this, uh, this forms the basis of uh, agri nutrition conference. And currently, what the government of Kenya is implementing, we have the big four agenda, that is food security, food and nutrition security, affordable health care, affordable housing, and also manufacturing. These are the, and therefore the agri-nutrition, that is the, uh, the food and nutrition security, that is part of the big four. We also have uh, the agriculture sector transformation and growth strategy 2019-2029, which has nine pillars, and food and nutrition security is part of the main pillar of this sector working uh, strategy, which also, and under the big four, we are talking about 100% food and nutrition security in Kenya. So we need to showcase the agri-nutrition experiences that is from production to consumption of healthy, nutritious food. And this one forms a platform for experience sharing in the role of agriculture improving nutrition outcome. This one bridges the disconnect between nutrition and agriculture. Therefore, the need for us having agri-nutrition conference. Uh, there have been uh, great uh, strides. We have made great strides since the inception of uh, Agri Nutrition Conference in 2017 because we have seen in, in, in collaborators. In the initial conference of 2017, the participation we had 201, but in by 20. In 2018, we saw a potential growth of 402 of interested and participating partners, and that one continued even in 2019 with 200, 408. Also, the organization, and we have got also partners increasing to 25 organizations. 
Therefore, there has been a lot of interest in this. We have had a lot of uh, sales of activities during the conference. One of the critical uh, activities and filling of key documents, these key documents are developed uh, by partners, many uh, a consortium of collaboration. One of the key documents is a green nutrition resource manual. As I had mentioned earlier, the, 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 there has been the blooding of ag home economy to agri nutrition. Therefore, there, is, there was a need for a resource manual for reference to the, from the national government to the country government in Kenya. Agri nutrition dialogue card, we, we, we deal, for behavior change and communication, we have a green nutrition dialogue card. There are 14 cards of them explaining from production to consumption, a change and behavior change kind of a, a, a document uh, guiding the, our, our rural communities. The Kenya food composition tables, this was a review from 1993 when we had the initial food composition tables. And based on the, the change of soils and, uh, and the production systems, there was need to update the Kenya food component. In 2018, it was, uh, it was also unfailed and, uh, and completed. It was also uh, based on a consortium of stakeholders. The Kenya recipe book, this one is to guide on, our, on how we prepare our foods in, here in Kenya. We have been lacking a, 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 no, a national uh, recipe book. And this is a document that was prepared consultatively with the regions, with the women in the different regions in Kenya who have different food habits. And uh, this one forms the basis of uh, how, how we can improve our dietary consumption. The National Dietary and Health Guidelines, this is a, a document domiciled in the Ministry of Health, but it was collaboratively done, and it helps in how to, 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 to guidelines on how dietary consumption and also health and physical activity. The agri-nutrition curriculum, this rebranding of home economic to agri-nutrition uh, requires a capacity and enhancement for the stakeholders and for the uh, field staff. This one therefore forms a curriculum which is domiciled in Kenya School of Agriculture and it is a training package on what, what is the new thinking of nutrition in agriculture and how can they, are they linked and what should be considered. So uh, another other, other form of activity is exhibition and a poster presentation and also topical presentation by key speakers and panel discussion. I, 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 what next for agri nutrition is continuous research finding and evidence based intervention to, form, to inform policies. We also need to enhance capacity building for policy development and implementation, implementing units. The reason here being that uh, as we be blooded from nutrition, home economic to agri nutrition, the policy development also has to be in line. And, uh, the implementing units, which are the counties, require to be realigned to this. This is our next step, and this is where we are now, developing the necessary document, the necessary capacity enhancement, together with all the implementing partners at the local level. We are going to develop indicators to measure what progress is being made in terms of nutrition in agriculture. Collaboration at parts where are they working, how are they doing, and how can synergies be developed to bring out what the, uh, the, the counties and the partners are doing. The other one is to expose investment opportunities for nutrition, and these are very many, depending on, in, in terms of even once we change the food habits, for example, uh, our staple food in Kenya is maize flour, and we, for, we eat more of ugali. So if we can change it and blend it with the more nutritious food. There is an investment opportunity. This our plus on board, and this is what is next in the in line with agri-nutrition. The other one is to break the disconnect between nutrition and agriculture. Nutrition for long has been thought of as a health issue. So, so if we now have to intervene from uh, production, then there is the, to, there is need to break this disconnect by forming more linkages with our health counterparts, with the other partners, and with all the other sectors in the government and uh, private sector, and also our UN uh, bodies that are partnering in terms of improving nutrition through agriculture. Thank you. 
Next, uh, my colleague George will talk to you about uh, communication for agriculture and uh, for agri nutrition conference. Welcome, George. Yeah, thank you, Humphrey. Um, uh, right from the beginning, communication really has been central to the organization and um, implementation of this conference. And this is because uh, the evolution from uh, home economics to agri-nutrition uh, really needed to be uh, amplified and uh, for the stakeholders needed to know um, about this evolution and, uh, and uh, what actually it entails. So we sought to position the, the conference as a major event in the agricultural calendar. And uh, we did this through extensive uh, pre-event promotion for all conferences. Um, we created uh, an identity for the conference. So there has been a logo that we've used for the first two conferences. And uh, this has been slightly modified for the third conference. And uh, these activities have actually given the conference uh, an identity and uh, a position a pre as a premier event in the national agricultural calendar. So post the event, we organized different forums uh, to disseminate the, the um, recommendations of this uh, conference. And they give uh, partners a platform to amplify some of the key messages that are coming out, uh, including uh, uh, positioning the various uh, products that Jen has talked about for use by stakeholders. Yeah, central to the communication for the conference has been uh, been efforts to position the the publications and knowledge products that have been developed to to um, uh, to support to promote agri-nutrition. And uh, right from the beginning, as Jen indicated, there was a lack of uh, national reference materials uh, positioning agri-nutrition uh, and really building on the base that. Uh, had been uh, uh, the, uh, on the base of the, the home economics uh, uh, activities. So the various publications have been uh, heavily promoted, uh, both through traditional media and through various forums. And uh, during the three conferences, we've had segments where we launch these publications and give the participants an, uh, an opportunity to, to interact with the developers of these publications and various experts on, uh, on how these uh, publications uh, can, be, can be used. In the third conference, we featured uh, a live platform, a town hall style meeting uh, after the launch during which uh, participants were able to give their views and, uh, and the ministry was able to position these uh, publications in the public domain. Uh, for for increased uh, utility. Okay, the, all three conferences have been very well covered uh, in the mass media. Uh, uh, we had uh, the print media covering uh, very prominently the the three conferences, uh, and uh, this. Uh, conference was also uh, very, very visible uh, in the online space, uh, both in the mainstream media and then the specialized media like Business Daily, the East African. So the conference is a well-recognized event. So during the event, uh, we had uh, the Green Nutrition hashtag that has been selected to, to, for this conference uh, trending during all three conferences. So we are very confident that uh, uh, this conference is now an established uh, event in the national calendar. We've also been tracking uh, through media monitoring mentions of this conference, various articles, and the evidence actually shows that uh, really the, the reach is very, very, very wide and increasing as we, with a series of conferences. Hmm. Next time. Yeah. Um. Uh, 
Um, uh, for the knowledge uh, base, we we developed uh, websites for each of the three conferences to facilitate online registration, uh, sharing of the conference program, and uh, through these conferences, also through um, uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook, we live stream the content. And uh, after these conferences, we had uh, this website running for a while as the repositories. Uh, for containing the abstracts, presentations, the final conference report, conference board photos, uh, and other products uh, post the event, accessible post the event. Okay, the challenge has been that we developed different websites for the three conferences. And the objective of the ministry is uh, to consolidate this into a single portal uh, that will have a longer shelf life and which will curate the growing body of field experiences and also have platforms for communities of practice to, to share emerging and best practices. Uh, we'll also hope to, we also have, hope to have a training uh, on agri-nutrition, building on the agri-nutrition curriculum and the various products available. So the ministry is currently working on a concept and uh, uh, in collaboration with various partners to have this uh, conference really as the per perpetual uh, repository for the conference uh, information. Thank you, Humphrey. Thank you, George. So I'll talk about uh, metadata management for the Agri-Nutrition Conference uh, to convert it to a data provider to the Agris database, uh, FAO. Um, so, um, we began with an examination of the knowledge products, uh, which uh, my colleagues Jen and George have uh, mentioned, uh, like the book of abstracts, uh, in-service in training curriculum, conference, conference programs, posters, and uh, all the products that are available related to agri-nutrition conference. This uh, examination was done in order to come with a standardized metadata, which is required to share agri-nutrition knowledge products uh, from the various uh, uh, stakeholders of this conference. And then uh, we created a Mendeley archive of uh, agri-nutrition knowledge products, where uh, the materials that we have have been archived. Uh, this is an example of the Mendeley archive of uh, agri-nutrition knowledge products that we have so far recorded. Uh, we have a collection of uh, a library of 47 items and uh, already available in uh, Mendeley. Um, this is a, an example of, the, of an item that has already been registered in the archive. Uh, that is the book of abstracts for the third National Agri-Nutrition Conference. Uh, you can see there the metadata and the knowledge product PDF itself. This is another example, the in-service agri-nutrition training curriculum, also in the Mendeley archive. And uh, now here we have uh, the common metadata that is required uh, for sharing agri-nutrition knowledge products that will be required in future uh, to be shared by the participants or, or the stakeholders that will be involved in future conferences. So we have come up with this list uh, of the common uh, metadata like the author, affiliation, corporate author, title, subtitle, all the way down to the type of the publication. And we are calling this uh, Kenya National Agri-Nutrition uh, Application Profile, uh, K-N-A-N-P. So we have the prefix K-N-P, and then we have the, uh, the type of the metadata that is required for each item. Uh, this table here shows a mapping how the agri-nutrition application profile shall be mapped 
to Dublin Core Metadata Schema. Um, on the left, you have the agri-nutrition metadata, which we shall uh, transfer. This is currently on the Mendeley archive, but we shall transfer to a repository, which my colleague jo George mentioned about a repository for the conference. Uh, we intend to have a repository at the Ministry of Agriculture. And then this now shall be used to transform the data to Dublin Core from, from Mark 21 format to Dublin Core, uh, which shall be shared with the AGRIS uh, uh, discovery interface or AGRIS database of uh, FAO. Uh, this is an example here of the AGRIS uh, discovery interface. Uh, currently, a search on agri nutrition shows uh, 293 entries. And so we intend to provide more entries to this uh, database in the future as a uh, agri nutrition conference becomes a data provider to agris. So, what is the future? What next? Uh, as I mentioned, we intend to have a national agri-nutrition repository for where all uh, materials relating to future and past agri-nutrition conferences uh, will be uh, stored or archived. And this will be hosted at the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives of the Government of Kenya. And we systems proposed for this, uh, we intend to use either COHA um, uh, library system or uh, DSPES uh, for digital ar archiving. Um, so before we share this uh, metadata with the FAO's AGRIS database, we need to enrich uh, the agri-nutrition metadata with FAO's AgroVoc descriptors, and then uh, we finally share it, uh, the Kenya National Agri-Nutrition metadata with FAO's AGRIS discovery interface. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Humphrey um, and your colleagues. Um, well, now we have all the uh, presentations completed. Uh, it's a question and answer uh, time. So let me let me check the uh, the chat field. So I um, I have uh, two questions uh, for uh, Hossein. Uh, the first question is. Um, why open source solutions don't seem to work uh, universally in an important one? So that was the question. I'm not sure whether this question is clear enough for you to yes. answer. Sure, thanks for the question. Um, so open source software in, uh, varies a lot in terms of the quality, reusability, installability, the amount of effort that's needed in maintenance, the skills that are needed in the person who's going to manage it. And I think the biggest problem is that many uh, people who want to operate archives don't have the personnel who are skilled enough in being able to manage open source solutions. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, the next question is from uh, Paul Wal Walker. The, uh, the question asks, uh, says, I share your enthusiasm for static site uh, generation as an approach to future proofing content delivery and uh, operating in low resource conditions. Um, can I ask how you are delivering the faceted search in your example? Okay, so at the risk of getting a bit technical. Um, so in the, in the example in the system that I'm working on at the moment, the faceted search um, uses classical information retrieval approaches. And I start off with a collection of metadata and the metadata is used to generate the site and almost simultaneously it's used to generate 
um, a collection of inverted index files. So that's, that happens as the pre-processing step. And when this is viewed in the client's browser, there is a JavaScript search and the entire search engine is implemented in JavaScript and picks up the files in the inverted index as needed. Okay. Um, well, let me check. Uh, the next question comes from Tom, but I'm not sh uh, sure whether it's for all um, panelists or uh, for any particular speaker. The question is, what role do universities play in capacity building for data, metadata, and web technologies in African countries? How can one train data and the content uh, producers in rural areas? So who want to tackle on this question? Um, perhaps Humphrey or um, uh, what is the, uh, uh, or Hussein, do you have uh, any? Um, I have lots of thoughts on this, I don't know if uh, Humphrey wants to add anything, but let me, let me start maybe to say that these are difficult problems, right? Um, universities in many countries have taken on the role of training because nobody else is doing it. And I've been in some uh, archiving projects where the universities come together and decide that they're going to do something for the national good because government is too tied up doing all kinds of other things and can't actually do what needs to be done. So it's a very, very strange situation. Um, and the, the problem then, of course, is that the university actually shouldn't be doing this in the first place in some cases. Uh, but the second part about training data and content producers I'm not sure this is really possible. Um, the moment you train somebody, they will leave and they will get a job doing something else and make more money. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true and common um, in many places, right? Um, yeah, okay. Um, I uh, see there's another uh, question uh, from Masha Sen. Um, the question reads, uh, is to Humphrey and uh, his colleagues. In the application profile, the recommendations has no mapping metadata element in Mark 21 or Dublin Core. Do you have this part just a paragraph of statements or have a pick list or taxonomy to use? Uh. Uh, thank you. So um, on that, uh, we just I just did a simple uh, matching of the fields between um, the application profile to Mark 21 and then also to to to, to Dublin Core. But uh, we are using that uh, the field descriptions in Mark 21 and Dublin Core and trying to relate them to the field uh, in our application profile. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. Or maybe Marsha, if you want to uh, speak up, you can. Okay, so we should be able to share our video now. Uh, I see, uh, but in any case, um, I don't want to be the only one <laughs> showing the video. Okay, I can do that. I'm able to start video. I can't, but the speakers can. Please do, uh, so people can look at you. Uh, I do have a question for Marie Cloud. Uh, I noticed whether in your presentation that you uh, showed a format element as well as a technical property element. I wonder, uh, you know, what's the difference between the two? Because uh, uh, when I see the value in your technical property, you also uh, gave examples for 
like PDF and but uh, shouldn't those put into the format element? So what's the difference between the two? Jan, do you mean the difference between the descriptive metadata and the technical metadata? I'm not, I don't remember what, uh, how you uh, group these two uh, elements, but I noticed the format in the previous slide. And then in the next slide, I, I saw you have a technical uh, property. And then on the right column, you have examples. PDF, uh, you know, HTML. Oh, okay. I think you referred to the slides where uh, uh, I displayed the metadata concepts that uh, we need to uh, receive from these institutions mm -hmm. and uh, the mapping we were able to do to uh, specific fields and uh, content server in GC Docs, Open Text Content Server. Is that what you, you mean? Yeah, I think it's about the, um, the application profile. Yeah, so, uh, so your question is explaining the difference or? Yeah, I, I, I just want, you know, I was curious. Um, I think okay. from the slide, maybe I missed some information, but it seems to me that you have used both format, adopted the format uh, element from Dublin Core and then in your local uh, application, uh, you have another element, uh, something like technical properties. Yeah, so I think I get what, uh, what you mean. So we have, we have defined a list of metadata concepts and information about the records that we need to receive from these institutions. And so we have a list of about 11, 12 um, concepts. And we define them as concepts because we, we couldn't define them as specific elements because we're going to receive, well, at the moment we receive uh, metadata uh, and metadata values from different um, metadata sets. Some that are proprietary to uh, systems and some that use uh, uh, standardized application profiles, some use local application profiles and so on. So we, we didn't want to be prescriptive prescriptive on elements. So we basically want to have uh, whatever element you call title, we want this concept of a title. You need to send us a title or a creator or um, a unique identifier. So, um, uh, so the, the mapping and in the, in the right column, you see the mapping. So that's, the, that's how the metadata elements, they're more like fields, but anyway, let's call them elements appear in the application GC doc. So we were able to, uh, to map what is it that we want to the specific fields in GC docs. And in an XML script, we can encode them in a way that they go directly where they're supposed to go when they arrive in our environment. Okay. Does it clarify, Jan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> um, do we have... I don't see any more questions from, um, from the chat. Um, we still have about five minutes. Um, any more comments? Yes. Marie Cloud. Yes, I have a question for Flora actually. So uh, I find the visualization, uh, all visualization uh, initiatives are uh, are really uh, um, amazing. I'm a visual person, so I like to have uh, an image. It tells me <laughs> 1,000 words <laughs> in one uh, in one image. So uh, maybe I missed it. But did you did you use specialized software to use yes. the the metadata and the data, the values to transform them? Yes. What what I used at the beginning was to uh, Mendeley as the main. Uh, a place to 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 create my, my database and then I migrate this information with a specific file and I use this uh, software that is called Voss Viewer. Okay. That is a free source that you can download and you know I, I find that very useful because uh, sometimes we say we have 20,000 files or 20,000 registers of blah 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 but when you do this type of visualizations, then you realize what is, what is inside of these 2,000 registers, no? 
So in this case, um, for us, it was, uh, we really discovered uh, a lot of things that we didn't know before with these network visualizations. So it, it is going to be useful, for example, to know uh, which experts can we invite for the next editions or from which countries we are, you know, having uh, this uh, lack of participation and this type of things, no? That is more like in a higher level. No? So you're going to reuse them, uh, use uh, yeah. the database and the visualization tool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Like in an, an, in a strategical way, no? Yeah. 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 To uh, to derive insight. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you I, for I the invitation. Have a question. Um, not exactly to your uh, to your um, no. I mean, question for Hussein and Humphrey and his colleagues. Um, I noticed that in your presentation, uh, you know, several of you used uh, uh, mentally as the tool for storing uh, and organizing the metadata about publications, um, um, reports, and all, you know, the documents. So, um, so I wonder, this is kind of a look forward uh, like, you know, a few years, five years, uh, three years, five years down the road, when the metadata collection, you know, metadata sets or whatever records uh, grows in size. Um, have you thought about, um, you know, whether mentally will be, will be the, will remain the platform to continue to, to serve as the repository for the purpose or you know maybe in next three or five years there's a, a you know cross africa um, metadata repository and whether this kind of you know storage can serve the scaling up um, purpose um, have you thought about that i'm just curious I can tell you that the, from my point of view, as a Mexican living in here in Europe, uh, using Mendeley is useful because you can create, for example, your library, and then you can also share it with the entire community that is uh, having an account in Mendeley, and it's for free at the moment. So the beauty in, in, in this case is that, that I can use this um, this uh, to, to export or to import uh, registers and then create my network visualizations. But I don't know the other colleagues, uh, the, the, the use that they are giving to these uh, Mendeley accounts. But yes, I can see that it's very um, friendly and this could be super interesting if it's continue, if, if continues being for free. No? Yeah, I would. I wonder that too. Because if when when the size reaches to a certain volume, then they may start charging. But Hussein, I, I see you have a question or, or answer. <laughs> so I, I think everybody needs to be very cautious about putting a data into services that are in the so-called cloud. Um, yes. Living in South Africa, I constantly have to remind people that the cloud means not in South Africa that you're putting your data into some server that is somewhere across the ocean in, because no cloud provider we know of has servers locally. Of course. Uh, also, what we've, what we've learned uh, is that uh, companies can get bought out and they can go bankrupt and they can stop supporting products because it's no longer financially viable for them. So I think it's fine that we use tools that allow us to be productive. Um, but I strongly encourage everybody to have a local copy of absolutely everything. Yeah, uh, of course. Irrespective yeah. of what other tools you happen to be using. And Mendeley, Mendeley allows you to have it in, uh, in on or offline. So this is another thing that is very useful. And for example, in the case of the conference, uh, it's, it's a small community and sometimes you don't have the visibility that you would like to have. So having these records on the cloud and, and leaving them for free for to, like other people can um, 
make searches and this type of things, it also helps help us to give us more visibility, no? But yes, yes of course, yeah. the copyright reasons and everything. No? Very good. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, let me see. We are at the time, at the end of uh, this session, the, the time is uh, uh, there uh, for us to stop, unfortunately. Uh, I really enjoyed your uh, presentation. I hope uh, our uh, audience did that too. And uh, I want to thank you for giving uh, such interesting um, presentations about what's going on in your work and then uh, bring in the new developments in your area. And I'm, I especially appreciate uh, our speakers from, uh, from Africa countries because um, we, you know, this is a great opportunity. I think a pandemic somewhat did uh, a nice thing for us to give, give us an opportunity. Otherwise, if we have physical meeting, probably it's difficult for, uh, for people uh, to participate around the globe. So uh, I want to thank you for your time and uh, your um, uh, very interesting presentation and uh, with my best wishes and we thank can... you so much for the invitation time also yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> thank you all goodbye now bye-bye bye-bye <clears throat>